Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad to see all of you in, in person, uh, which is very unusual the uh, last three years. And um, thank you for those that are on the um, Zoom. Um, We're supposed to be under. Can you talk louder? Um, so um, I'm going to start the meeting, being that it's um, recording. Um, my name, this is the Education uh, Library and Cultural Affairs Committee. I'm Sylvia Alexander, the chair of it. And uh, welcome to everyone. Um, you know who's better? Uh, Teresa iPhone, um, can you identify yourself? Hello, yes, I'm Teresa Rodriguez from 180 Van Cortland Park. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, some of my members are on the um, Zoom because they have extenuating circumstances, uh, one of them being um, Mark Donato, uh, Georgia Santiago, uh, Judith Green, and Margaret Stella. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to start the meeting just uh, to let you know a, a few um, housekeeping things. Uh, first of all, uh, we don't have a quorum this evening, and those are the in-person people. So therefore, we can't vote. We can't um, pass the regulation, the resolution. Um, we are hampered uh, in any in many ways. Um, but we're going to have our meeting anyway. Normally, it would be no meeting. But we are uh, conducting this meeting because uh, we are very fortunate to have um, two people from uh, the School Construction Authority, um, Nicole uh, Holloway and uh, Andrea Bender. And um, we have been uh, breathlessly waiting for them to address us uh, as to uh, what is new with the school on, on West 239th Street in Van Cortland Park South. Uh, that's a new school which is going to be built where the visitation church uh, stood. And um, we would like to hear from them because um, it's very important to us to know we need new school. And um, I don't know who wants yeah, to well, I've listened. on, on the the issue, uh, Andrea or uh, Nicole, but one of you, uh, please start your presentation. Nicole, do you want me to share? Hi. No, hi everyone. All right. So good evening all. Once again, my name is Nicole Holloway and I'm the external affairs manager for the Bronx from the SEA. I'd like to thank the board members and the community for allowing us to come tonight to present. So if you'll just bear with me, I will share my screen as I, show, I start the presentation. So just to give everyone a reminder and some context, uh, this is a new proposed school and it will be located at 160 Van Cortland Park South. It is anticipated to have a school opening date of September of 2027. There'll be 696 seats. 96 of those seats will be dedicated solely to D75, while 600 seats will be for uh, pre-K to fifth grade. Uh, the design or the proposed design will present a cellar plus five floors and a rooftop play yard. So I'm going to go through and show you uh, where we're at so far. All right. So in the cellar, as you'll see, there's really nothing other than a stormwater tank room, tank access, water service room, an electrical room, as well as the fuel tank room. 
uh, there'll be a staircase uh, going down and coming up. So on the first floor, the new entrance would be at Review Place. You would enter on Review Place where you'll have some bike racks, a vestibule, you'll have your security booth area right here and your main lobby. To the left of the main entrance, you will have your brand new, uh, there'll be a brand new 237 seat cafeteria. There'll be uh, boys and girls toilet rooms, as well as some ground storage area. Then behind that, you'll have a brand new kitchen, servery area, food storage, walk-in freezer, cooler, uh, refuse, uh, refuse uh, recycling room. Then uh, you will have a dietitian's office and there'll be a dedicated uh, restroom for the kitchen staff to use. If you come back out here, uh, straight across as you come in, you'll see you could come in and walk straight across down another corridor and that'll lead you out to the smaller ECC play yard. Uh, in that same corridor, you have a parent's community uh, resource room. To the right of that, you'll have your principal's office, records room, as well as the main office. Right here, you have your two elevators. And then as we go up and around, you'll have uh, staff restrooms, you'll have a waiting area, you have storage rooms, uh, two dedicated office spaces back here. And uh, this is all within the medical suite. You have an exam room as well as a shower. Uh, next to that, you'll have another staircase as you can see right here. And then uh, right at the end, you have a service room uh, with fuel tank, RPZ valves and uh, such. Across from that, you have your four uh, pre-K classrooms, all of which will have dedicated restrooms. To Zoom, enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Okay. All right. Now let's move on up. As we go up to the second floor, you'll see uh, when you come off the elevators right here, you have a corridor to the left of that corridor. You have Otherwise, just press pound to continue. Somebody has to mute themselves. So, uh, coming up from this here. Wait, wait. 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 A little bit of a in the meeting, difficulty. There are 17 participants in the meeting. Mute, mute, mute everybody. You have been added to the waiting room. You cannot talk or listen until the host. Well, is this finished. sounds like a recording. Okay, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, but, so as you come up the staircase and you go to your left, you have your guidance office, um, office, you have a guidance conference room, as well as behind that, you have a dedicated exercise room to the left of that, project room. In front of that, you have your speech room. You also have another dedicated staircase here. And then adjacent to that, you have your first grade, four first grade classrooms. Then you have your second grade classroom, one of them in the middle. Then next to those, you have four kindergarten classrooms, also with bathrooms inside. Then across, you have your additional three uh, grade two classrooms. You have uh, both girls and boys toilets. You have a dedicated staircase here, one here, and then one more here. Third floor is gonna be a dedicated or well, partially dedicated D75 room where you'll have 10 um, in total, eight, I'm sorry, eight special education classrooms. So when you come out the stairs, if you go to your, well, it'll be my left, our left looking at the screen, but going to the right, you have your office space, you have a physical therapy room, you have a storage room, you have another corridor that leads to the back where you have uh, another classroom, another therapy space. Then um, coming across, 
You have additional classroom spaces, as well as a supervisory room, resource room, and a guidance suite or a guidance office. Adjacent from that, you have another guidance office. Uh, coming back down the corridor here, you have your girls and your boys toilet rooms. Then you have four grade three classrooms. Adjacent to that, you have a music room, part of the shared space. And then across, you have a multi-purpose room as well. All right. And on the fourth floor, when you come up the staircase, you'll come up and you'll be right at the brand new gymatorium that'll host, uh, be able to hold 224 occupants. You'll have stacking bleachers against the wall here, as well as another uh, staircase directly within the gymatorium. Behind that, you have a green room for storage. You have uh, another gym storage room for equipment. Then you'll have a platform that could be used for shows or however the school chooses to use it, as well as a uh, cheer storage room. When you come back outside of the gymatorium, you have your fifth grade classrooms as well as your fourth grade classrooms going across, another dedicated staircase. You have an IDF room, a supervisory room, and you again hear your elevators as well as a staff uh, restroom to use. All right, and then, um, on the fifth floor, you have the upper gymatorium uh, platform area. And that's another dedicated staircase with your green roof below. Coming across from that, you have an art room, science room, a custodian's workshop room, general storage right here, another staircase, electrical room. Across from that, the custodial office, Next to that, a teacher's workroom, a staff lunch and conference room, as well as the custodial uh, team will have a locker room. There'll also be a staff toilet. And then right here, Jason, to the elevators, you have your girls in your boys' restrooms. And also the CSE uh, special education room. And then last but not least, on the rooftop, you will have your uh, 5,700, uh, a little bit over play roof area. Again, a dedicated staircase coming up to access that play room area. Then right out here in the corridor, you have another staircase. Here's your elevators. You have a supervisory office as well as girls and boys toilets. And then on the other or adjacent side of the roof, you have your rooftop units and your generators. So this is the proposed plan for the new school at 160 Van Cortland. And um, that's the end of what we have to share with you for right now. Are there any questions or? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I did the wrong thing. No, no you're good. This to you, okay. Uh, Nicole or yes. Andrea, can you ask, can you answer some questions for me? If we can, sure. Okay, yeah, well, I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, before I start asking any questions, and I allow um, uh, the first, I'll call on the board members that are here in person. Uh, then um, any um, members of the community board that want to ask questions, and then we will go to the uh, public. Um, that is the way we're going to run the meeting. Um, I want to uh, warn everyone that, uh, not warn, but just to mention that um, we are uh, uh, functioning under a um, 
rule from the borough president to be courteous, uh, one speaker at a time, um, so that we have a very smooth and, and nice running um, meeting. So I, I have just a few questions of my own. And I just wanted to know if, if there is some kind of um, rule as to who uses the elevator in the building and how many people does it hold? So I can't un answer that question. That is up to DOE to decide how the elevator is used in the building. And I don't have the occupancy, but I could get it. And I'll get back. Okay, right. And um, I understand the um, play area up on the roof. Yes. Um, do you have any information about the um, play area that's in the parking lot uh, as an easement? I can't really comment on that right now. What information are you looking for? Um, how large is it? Uh, is it going to be interfered with the parking that is there? Uh, how safe it is for the children? Um, I, I don't understand why they would put a play area in a parking lot. So uh, I'm looking for an answer to that. Oh, I can't answer that question right now. I could get back to you. Okay. I um, just that. as an FYI, this is an early childhood play yard. So it'll be for the little ones, um, I believe, but we'll get you the exact square footage that it's 2,500 square feet and it will be fully fenced off. It will be, it will be safe for kids to use. What about the air quality? Um, I don't, we haven't, um, we haven't been made aware of any air quality concerns um, from our appropriate folks. Huh. Well, I'd love to know because we certainly know that uh, cars uh, emit um, gases that aren't good for children or grown-ups. So um, I, I just am concerned about the children. So if you could get me some information, that would be great. And could you just tell me your name again? I'm sorry. My name? Yes. Uh, my name is Sylvia Alexander. I'm the chair of the Education, Library, and Cultural Affairs Committee. Great. Okay. Thank you, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, um, well, the only um, hands that I see up are, um, oh, Margaret Della. She's one of our committee members. Uh, Margaret? Hi. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, could you just uh, remind me or uh, re-explain it again what the process is for this um, proposed plan? Is it something that's been proposed to the DOE and then it's waiting their vetting or um, what step are we in the process of reviewing it? Andrea, could you take that question? Absolutely. So um, as the board hopefully remembers, we presented this site to you in the f December of 2021. Um, and we were, uh, we received an affirmative vote at city council giving us approval to acquire the property in June of 2022. Um, so we have moved forward with our site design. We are uh, hoping to conclude design uh, later this summer and enter construction around the end of the year. Okay, um, Laura. Uh, hi, again, thank you for the presentation. Um, I am glad that you have, it seems to have, you have two gyms and science, art, music. I am really glad that there is space for those important um, topics. And I have a question, the exercise room, is that another gym? No, it's, it's a exercise room. The school could use it however they choose to. Again, it's just an additional 
a larger space than a typical classroom for the school to use. I don't know if it will have exercise equipment in it for elementary school level, but I could find out what's intended to go in there if there'll it, be any equipment. Those rooms are sometimes used as gym spaces. They do have padded walls that uh -huh. facilitate um, use as gym, gym classes. Um, I think it's about 1500 square feet, so it's a pretty good size. Uh, thank you. I have some other kinds of questions um, for the staging. Will all the staging be on your property? Um, public streets? Where will your heavy property, you know, um, equipment be stored? So right now we cannot answer that question. That is up to construction management to work out with uh, the developer and how they're going to stage. And honestly, we wouldn't have that until we have an a, approved site safety plan from the Department of Buildings. And we're just not at that stage yet. And when you do reach that stage, because there'll be a lot of questions on staging, coordination with Tishman, um, you know, you're getting your permits and coordinating everything so it's less of, of a of a nightmare for the community in terms of parking um at that juncture since you have a few more years ahead of you you will be returning to community board eight with updates i understand today is the design mainly and so we're throwing out questions you may not have today but uh you will be coming back may i uh soon? So uh, we can, but again, I need you to be mindful that means and methods are up to the contractor. We don't dictate how they stage because they're the ones that choose to doing this, but um, we can come back at a later date and talk a little bit more about that information. Okay. I, I also have a question about school buses. You're, are you using school buses? Again, Someone I can't answer that question right now. We don't know how DOE intends to uh, fill the building, use the building, or you know where they want to do pick up and drop off on the school buses. That's something that DOE has to determine. Okay, because that, that will be of interest, great interest to the community as to where they'll park, and you know so on and so forth with with that kind of thing. Um, Okay, I have more questions, but I'll circle back. I see there are right. many. Things. Uh, I'll thank give you. Another chance. Yes. yes. Um, Rosemary. Rosemary, you have a question. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, uh, just let's see. I think maybe two questions. Um, one is um, you showed on the very ground level. I think there was one. There was uh, an entry on the side street, excuse me for not knowing, uh, it's not Van Cortland Park South or 239th, but that street, and that was the entrance for the students. Um, uh, 700 students is a lot to let into to one spot. Um, uh, I did notice in your ground floor plan that there is an exit on Van Cortland Park South and an exit on 239th Street. Are those two entrances or exits in addition going to be used for students and or how will they be used? How are you going to get garbage and everything in and out of the, out of the building? So it's, I, I only saw th three, three entrances and exits. Is one for students? What are the other two? How are you going to use those exits? So, so again, um, there's more than two entrances on it. There's more than two egresses on that floor. Uh, there's the main entrance and it goes straight yeah. across through the lobby out to the play yard. But then both at both ends, there's also gonna be um, egresses as well. Again, we cannot, SCA cannot determine how the DOE school that will occupy the building chooses to do arrivals, chooses to do dismissals. Um, that will be on them. We can't answer that question. Understood, but but I did read the floor plan correctly. There are only three three places of ingress and egress. That that I did read it correctly, right? Uh, I would have to refer back to that. Let me. It's your drawing. I... 
Yeah. Nicole, do you want to pull the first floor plan back up? I believe there's also a dedicated refuse, um, a dedicated refuse yeah. exit. Thank you. I will give me one second to share my screen again. The the main entrance is on review, and then the secondary and I guess tertiary means of egresses are on 239th and Van Cortland Park South. Um, those are all code required. One more floor. So up. So, so so I'm looking there correctly. There's a review place is one. Van Cortland Park South is a second, and 239th. There's am I right? Service room. There's another. So, so I'm correct. There were three. There were three entrances and exits. That's that's all I'm there's, asking. Is that it? Yes. And okay. there's also an egress to the to the ECC yard, although it doesn't Under, egress I, to a street. I understood. And that that egress to the play area doesn't help anybody coming into the building. It's it's a an egress correct. to a particular. Good. Okay. Th Thank you. So I did read the, the thing. I just have one more question uh, to that uh, play yard in the parking lot for the housing development. Um, uh, the edges, the edges to it, the, the, the um, uh, there was concern from a prior questioner about it being in a parking lot, which it is. What are what is the and, and fencing or buffers that would protect or I'll use the word term buffer the children, the youngest children from the parking lot? Are there going to be bushes, fences, high fence? What is going to, um, uh, uh, I don't, don't want to use the word protect, but I will protect and screen the children from the parking lot. What are the edges to do that? So right now we cannot answer that question. This is just a basic design layout to show you. Um, again, uh, as we get additional information, perhaps later on this year or early next year, we could come back and answer that question. Okay, I would, and, and I, thank you. Thank you for your answer. And I would hope that that concern for me and other speakers or questioners would be taken in consideration in the design. Thank Certainly. you. Certainly. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Um, I'd like to call on uh, Judith Green. Yes. Uh, my question is, have you met with members of the DOE in laying out the rooms? Who, who made up this design? So our any department came up with the design. Who did? Our uh, any department. But you did this without. And an art, we, have, we have an architecture and engineering okay. department uh -huh. that designs all schools on behalf of the DOE. But who, not on behalf. Who, what input has the DOE had in laying out where the, who the classrooms belong to? clustering grades together in your floor plan. Who, who, who helped you with that? That's our standard. Whose standard? The SCA's standard. So this is subject to discussion with the DOE? Will this be done in conjunction with DOE? DOE will decide how to utilize the rooms. All of the grade level rooms that are above kindergarten can be used interchangeably. But when we design a school, we typically do um, intend for the classrooms to be clustered together that serve the same grades. Um, so this is something that SCA does for all of our schools. I see, I wasn't aware of that. I, I am a, a retired special ed teacher. And I, uh, I do not like the idea that the school uh, has all the special ed students clustered together. Uh, that's, that's against everything that I uh, worked with. So I'm just wondering who makes that decision. Well, I will say that when we have a dedicated District 75 program, which is, as I'm sure you're aware, obviously um, not just you know, standard special ed um, right. for efficiency purposes and for ease of mobility of those students, the DOE does like us to locate all D75 programs on the same floor. 
that's the D75, but not the uh, special ed students that are merged in with the other classes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. This, the, the special ed classrooms that you're seeing on the floor plan is the D75 program. Only D75. Correct. And before, and, and that gets approval. The ZOE will look this over before you uh, complete construction. No, they don't. We have standards and guidelines that we've worked out with them that guide how we design schools, um, but they don't review the floor plans. Our architects and engineers um, do that on, on their behalf. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Steve Root, board member. Thank you. Um, I, I, a, a few very, uh, each of them a small question. Um, the first is, is there any space for uh, students to gather either as grades or as, you know, whole school for what used to be called assemblies? So the gymatorium is an interchangeable area that could be used as a gymnasium or it could be used as an auditorium for, for a gathering or for an event. And then you also have the... Um, What's the other room? I'm sorry, I just can't get it off the top of my head. You have like a multi-purpose room or that exercise room. So it's again, however they want to use it, but the gymatorium is interchangeable. But the, the gymatorium, as I recall, has an occupancy of approximately 200 to 235 uh, people. So mm -hmm. if it was necessary to get, for example, you, you couldn't have a grade one to five assembly in the school because that would be too many students for the gym by a factor of a few, right? So there would not be a place for the entire school to gather or you know, let alone several grades together at one time. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. Is that part of the, Ms. Bender, is that part of the normal design? Uh, you know, Yes, it is. For, for a school? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I think uh, Chair Spalter mentioned early, said earlier something on the order of there, there would be two gymnasiums. I think that I, as a point of information, my sense is that it's a double height or a double floor. It's a single room. It's not two gymnasiums. Is that correct? No, it's not two gym, gymatoriums. It's just one, but it's double height. Right. Um, is there a library? Yes, there is. Yes. I didn't, I, I didn't remember from the drawing. What floor is that on? Uh, give me one second while I go back. So the library will be on, I think it's the, uh, it's on the second floor. Okay. And I, I know that there was a science room and an art room on the top floor, or maybe not top, but maybe the fifth floor. And uh, I don't recall if there was a music room, a place yes. for orchestra or a band to practice. So yes, there is. And if you give me one second. So uh, the music room is on the third floor. It's gonna be the only shared space on the dedicated D75 floor. And then on the fourth floor, you don't have, on the fifth floor, you have an art room as well as a science room. Okay. And could you tell me what the occupancy is for the art room, the science room, and the music room? Uh, of... I, I don't have that information, but I could get back to you. I mean, is it fair to say that it would be for under 40 students or 40 uh, or below? I mean, based on your knowledge of the drawing, I you know, it's not my I'm not good at this stuff, but yes, it would be under 40. Okay. Um, and lastly, just, is there a quick definition of D75? I think maybe most people on the call know what that is, but I'm not, I wasn't familiar with it. Special education, citywide special education program. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do, do you know how many staff will be working from that location? No, we do not. That's a question for DOE. And is there a maximum number, like a capacity for how many people can occupy the space? Which space are you referring to? The entire school space. 
the building. The building. The building. Yeah. Um, oh. We can get the fire code occupancy. Yeah. Um, in our experience, the um, fire code occupancy far exceeds the number of occupants that would ever be in the building just based on the size of students' classrooms. And uh, I also see a large area dedicated to D75. Do you know how many wheelchairs the D75 section can accommodate? And is the our two elevators that I saw on the drawings enough for the wheelchairs? So I don't have that information right now, but we will find out and I'll get back to you. So, so you uh, just the, for the D75 students, not every D75 student requires a wheelchair or other mobility assistance. So um, there could be students with all types of special needs who are enrolled in a D75 program. And that again, how the children are enrolled in the building is up to DOE. So again, we won't be able to answer how many students in wheelchairs there might be, but again, in our experience and based on code requirements, this two elevators is sufficient to serve a school of this size. There is no parking space. I didn't see any parking designated for the staff, right? That's the correct. Drawings? That's correct. Thank you. I apologize. I am uh, I'm on my uh, iPhone, so I can't uh, necessarily see the queue at the same time I can see uh, the meeting, but I have um, one quick question slash point of clarification and then a more substantive question. Um, my quick point of clarification is uh, the in the presentation, you said that the school uh, has set a uh, 696 uh, desks or seats. Um, that's, there's been some inconsistency in your EAF, uh, it, which says 736. So if you could please clarify the actual number of desks you uh, intend to have in the school. 696 seats. Okay, you, you do know that that's not what's in your EAF, right? The it's, EAF has seven. It's possible that there have been some changes in the um, calculation that's standard when we do a program for a school and our EIS always analyzes a worst case scenario. More students is always a worst case scenario. It certainly is. Um, okay, so that's, that was my point of clarification. Um, obviously, I prefer to see 696 to 736, uh, but the larger question is uh, about why the school needs to be as as big as it is needs to have as many students as it does and needs to be as tall as it is um and i realize you know we'll hear about needs for for desks um you know all of the seats in our current uh schools are not even full and if you look at a school like um ps7 right that school has something like 430 desks so you're what you're proposing here is almost twice as large as the next largest school in our area. Um, and as a local resident, actually I live in the building right next door, uh, we are extremely concerned about traffic, school buses, um, about the, our, our, our building being affected because of the need to widen sidewalks. Um, and it seems to me that the impact of let's call it round up 700 students plus support staff, plus faculty, et cetera, and so on, uh, is going to be, is gonna put an enormous strain on the area. Uh, having said that, I've also listened to some of the questions that are being asked about things that the school doesn't have, like an auditorium that can hold the entire school for an assembly or a fire drill or whatever. Um, and, I, and I have more, you know, a, a larger question about the choice of design and why the decision was made to go for greater density as opposed to a design that would have less of an impact on the surrounding neighborhood, but would also um, be more in keeping with the character of the neighborhood, which is across the street from a park. Um, when the school is built, it will also be next to uh, the, the 
uh, daylighted Tibbetts Brook. And I, in addition to my concerns for uh, my own quality of life and, and traffic and parking, um, I feel like SCA missed an opportunity here to um, take advantage of the of the community, take advantage of the the area and the neighborhood, and to create a school um, that was more innovative, that incorporated more green space, that was maybe smaller and had fewer students, but had a larger yeah. outdoor area. I've heard uh, concerns about this uh, preschool. Um, play lot, which is essentially in the middle of a parking lot. I'm concerned about students having to play uh, on a in a rooftop cage as opposed to uh, on a ground level play area. Um, I think there's a, a missed opportunity to incorporate green space. We're very concerned about the loss of trees. There's a gigantic, beautiful cottonwood tree on that property. Um, and I'm just I'm just wondering why you couldn't have made a more innovative, innovative. more forward-thinking green design that would both allay the concerns of the community, but also create a really amazing learning environment for our children. It seems like what we have now is a lose-lose. It could have been a win-win. And I'm just wondering if you can justify some of that decision-making, especially since you're still in finalizing the design of it. Thank you. So what I'll say is that um, real estate opportunities across the city are scarce. Real estate is expensive and we have a finite budget that we spend on behalf of the taxpayers of the city of New York. So to that end, unfortunately, um, we are not finding anywhere in the city appropriate real estate that enables us to build the full-sized auditoriums that you see in the buildings of the 1920s and the 1960s. The city is a very different environment now from a real estate perspective. So um, we provide a gymatorium for every school. That's our standard for all of our new school construction now. Um, and that's just a reality of real estate as far as why we've included so many seats here because the size of the lot um, can frankly accommodate that number of seats. And again, because it is more um, cost effective on behalf of the taxpayer for us to provide more seats to a community that has um, need for seats and has been very difficult for us to find appropriately sized real estate in. So it is more cost effective for us to um, accommodate those seats on one real estate transaction than multiple real estate transactions. Um, and we feel like we are building an appropriate facility for the children who will attend that school um, as we do for children in, in communities all across the city. Yeah, it's just a shame. Um, you know, there are two, as I'm sure you're aware, two projects. Uh, slated for the former visitation property. And uh, I, I think I speak for many people in, in the community when we say we were very distressed at the density uh, of both those projects. Um, and, I, and I just feel like neither project uh, is in keeping with, I said, the character of the neighborhood, the proximity of the park. Uh, we are not a dense urban area in the way that some other places in the city are. I think it's a shame that students have to be put in a rooftop cage as opposed to being able to uh, have ground level outdoor space. And, and, I, and, I, and I would just use this opportunity to encourage you to actually reconsider that, to, to, to reconsider that. And, and you know, you talk about taxpayers, I'm a taxpayer and I would rather see my money going to an innovative, forward looking, a uh, green type school than one that's going to, you know, crush the neighborhood. And quite frankly, I I'm concerned about crush, uh, you know, some of the, the, the creativity and the innovation of the students who are in it. Um, I, I really, really, really feel like you have a missed opportunity here. Uh, scale it down, use some of the other space you have more effectively and create something that is uh, that's that's going to be a, a, a beacon, that's going to be a, a, a model for what schools can be, as opposed to doing something just because you can. Doing something just because you can does not mean you should. Uh, and I think, I really think I speak for a lot of people when I say, you guys can do better. And I hope, I hope you hear us and you go back to your design team and you come back with something um, that is better. Thank you.
Yes, um, I have a question. Um, you mentioned the cafeteria. How many children does that hold? 237. How much? 237. So you'll have to have rotating lunch uh, periods? That's correct. Um, I can't see your name, but I see your hand up. Um, who is that, Brett? Georgia. Oh, do you have a question? WC, Georgia. Oh, Georgia. No, I don't think it is. Uh, okay, Georgia. Yes, it is. <laughs> what is your question? My question is, I would like, my question is to ask that, how many boroughs are these children will be busing or traveling to get there to 239? Can Bancourt. you repeat that again? How many, wh which boroughs or how many boroughs that you might uh, speculate that these children, how many will be attending the school? Uh, From which boroughs? How many boroughs? Only the Bronx. Bronx? And DOE generally only enrolls students in the uh, pre-K to fifth grade level according to their zone. They're zoned there. So no one from any other boroughs would be attending the school. Okay, I thought zone would have something to do with it, but thank you. Thank you, Georgia. Um, I still don't know who the, uh, there's an American flag in your square. Yes, that would be, uh, hi, my name is Brett. Um, I wanted to actually have a quick comment and a quick question. I'm very happy that there's bike racks included in the design of the school because many countries that rate high on the happiness index typically tend, such as the Netherlands and Finland, typically tend to have a lot of children biking to school. Not saying it's a causation, but certainly a correlation. And my question is, how many bikes can the bike racks accommodate? Thank you. So I don't have that right now, but I'll get back to you with how many bikes can the bike rack accommodate. Thank you so much. Um. You have a question? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to know how, how students would be picked to go to the school. Again, it's not being picked to go to the school. DOE zones students from in the area to go to the school. So it's it's not picking. That's the only way they, they get sent there, by being zoned. Typically, DOE will create a zone for a new school. They will work in coordination with their community education council and their superintendent. Um, if there's going to be any special programs, a dual language, GNT, whatever other special program they might have, those students may come from out of the zone. That's really something that DOE works out with the superintendent and the community education council as they get closer to school opening. Biology and special ed for 38 years in the city. And it's just amazing how sometimes things get turned around differently. To see it be fair. Um, Rosemary, is your hand up from before or newly? Yes. You're muted. Okay, just one question. Um, uh, it, 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 this what one statement uh, you hear in a, a number of comments that the site needs it, it seems to be uh, quite small to accommodate 700 students, the building and what you're able to do with that small site. So, what one, one question What is the last or any school in the Bronx that accommodated 700 students? on this small postage stamp area? Oh, I editorialized, I'm sorry. That's the question. Tell me uh, what, what and, and, and just a factual question. It, it, you don't have to tell me now. What, 
what um, what it, is there any other school in the Bronx with 700 students that is sitting on a uh, small uh, on on acreage this small because it feels very small for 700 students. So that's my question. That's it. I, 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 you don't. Of course, you can't answer it now, but I would appreciate an answer for for uh, the community board office and the community at large. Thank you. Noted. Yes, that's a question I can't answer right now, but I will get back to you. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you. With your thank hand you. up, Newly. Steve. Yes. Um, this is a follow-on to uh, the comments of Ms. Carlson. Um, was consideration given to using the entire lot that was provided by the you know departure of visitation for the school? as opposed to a combined development uh, in line with the comments about the concerns over inadequate space for this number of students and you know, paucity or scarcity of real estate. Here, there was an entire lot, which was essentially a park, if I remember correctly, that could have accommodated a building with still allowing for environmental and other reasons, uh, parkland to remain around the school, uh, to be used by the school, a ball field, for example, things like that. Um, was any consideration given to simply using that entire lot for school? So there's two things I want to say. Number one, this is not a combined project. These are completely separate projects. We are building a school on our property and the developer um, on the other side of the property is building their project. These are not combined projects. Um, and the SCA acquired all that we were able to acquire in the real estate transaction that was that was conducted. We were not able to acquire a larger portion of the property. Okay, I wasn't commenting on a combined project. I was just asking whether it was possible for SCA to acquire the whole piece of land because it was obviously available for want of a better real estate term. We were not able to acquire the entire property. Why not? I cannot speak to the seller's motivations for selling the property. Was that something that you requested or negotiated or it just never came up? I was not part of the um, transaction team, but we did acquire, we did attempt to acquire the entire property. Oh. Mm -hmm. Georgia, do you have another question? Georgia, is that Georgia? No, no, there. Oh. Okay, your hand is still up. Um, okay, Laura. I'll take it down. Hi, uh, just uh, riffing off of what Rosemary said, uh, I know that in our calls, we discussed, I discussed some research I did and I saw a similar uh, acreage, approximately half acre um, in Queens, in Brooklyn, and you know, around the city where SCA uh, built schools that had 400, 500. And I also, from the beginning, have expressed that the proportion of students to the acreage, et cetera, uh, is excessive. And um, we had hoped that you would scale down. We understand that you're trying to solve overcrowding, but there are, uh, you know, several examples that I, I raised with you. Um, and it's disappointing at the end of the day that it is 696 students on such a, a small plot of land. And um, that's all. I just, uh, this has been noted. It has been discussed. And um, you know, I know you're trying to squeeze every inch and, and do the best you can, but it, it is a lot. That's almost 700 uh, students. It, it, it is a lot and there's a big impact. That's all. But who makes these decisions? Isn't this a cooperative effort of the construction company and the DOE? Excuse me, who's Our, Isn't there a committee? Isn't there a committee 
that sits Excuse down me. and discusses all of this? Oh. I couldn't really hear you. I heard two people talking. A CA no, is the I was real just estate. Asking uh, who was uh, speaking? Because your hand isn't up, Judy. Okay, as, okay, I'm sorry. A CA functions as the real estate. Your question. A CA functions as the real estate arm of the DOE. So um, we acquire property and design and construct schools on the DOE's behalf. Again. Sylvia, can, can I can I rephrase my my question? If you want to, I would like to. Who do you meet with in the community with the DOE before you make a design of what you of the the ground that you're going to use? Does that occur, or is this something that is occurring right now? after the fact that you already made your design? So when we acquire a property, we have a public review process that we engage the community and the council member on. That's what we started and concluded 2021 to 2022. That's um, what's required of us in terms of our community engagement. When we um, acquire a property, we make a recommendation to the Department of Education based on the size of the property, the location of the property, the availability of real estate in a community, yeah. um, and a various factors. And we work collaboratively with DOE to determine the grade levels that the school should serve um, and things like that. We have a five-year capital plan that spells out where we have seat need. That's what drives our real estate search. Um, and um, I think it won't come as any surprise to this group of folks. We've been looking for a parcel of land in this community for a very long time. Um, it's been overcrowded in your schools for a long time. And um, you know, prior to acquisition of a site, we, we always have DOEs um, input before we acquire a site. They don't opine on the very specifics of design and construction because that's our expertise, but we agree with them on the program, on the grade levels, um, and on high level things like that before we enter into this process, well before Good. we I'm, enter into I'm, this process. I'm very, I'm very happy to hear that that's done. That, that's all. I just wanted to know that there was a collaboration of uh, uh, DOE, community, and construction before something uh, started. Okay, um, any other questions? I want to thank um, Nicole and Andrea for coming today. It was very meaningful and helpful that uh, you did share all this information with us. And I hope that we will see you again uh, in not too distant future. Uh, the other, uh, the next uh, phase of the situation. Um, I'm sorry, I, I passed over someone who has his hand up. Lewis? Hi, yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, are there any plans to add any sidewalk bollards or protective, um, you know those barriers between traffic and the school? Could you say that again? I'm sorry. Are there going to be any protective batters? Like those steel, um, they're like little pylons on the street that protect, you know, those on the sidewalk from the traffic. And the reason I ask is this, I'm a local parent of a four-year-old and the traffic in the area, to be honest, is quite scary. He already has a fear of those mopeds that almost run us over weekly on the sidewalk as well as the cars, I almost got run over today across the street and I have the right of way. I'm concerned that if I put my son in that school in the future as any other parents, given the heavy load of traffic um, in this neighborhood and the lack of respect for life, that though that our children will be safe even walking on those sidewalks. Because I will add, within the last month, I've seen a car flip over I've seen, you know, uh, cars crash onto trees in our neighborhood. Um, I'm not sure if those things come up in conversations, but our children are incredibly important. And I would definitely want to know that they have something to protect them from 
those um, who do not value life in our in our neighborhood. So right now, I don't know if there'll be protective barriers or pillars on the sidewalk. That's a question I could take back to the design team and I could ask and get back to you. Thank you. Do you have another question? Yes, just one a brief follow-up. Um, Ms. Bender, you indicated that once there's a, a piece of land SCA has designed guidelines or, or things like what has to be included in a school, let's say elementary school population with maybe also D75. Um, so if, for example, in modern school building in New York, there's, there's not a requirement that there be a room that could seat large portions of the school like the old fashioned auditorium, uh, or there are design guidelines for how much square footage per, per total pupil population has to be allocated to be a mu dedicated music room or a science room, art room, things like that. How do those guidelines uh, get adopted? I mean, in the broadest sense, is it something that's dictated by DOE or is it something that the city council votes on or is there another agency that makes the rules subject to public comment? Just curious because obviously the sentiment is that this is, an, this is unfair to the children who go to this school. So obviously we adhere to all code requirements, right? So building code, fire code, all of the code requirements all the time, Sure. number one. Um, but as far as the number of square feet per pupil in a music room, science room, art room, those rooms are going to be larger than your standard classroom and they will typically be intended to be used by one class at a time. So those, um, rooms are going to have more square face per student than um, your standard classroom is going to have. Um, and in terms of um, the square footage per student, what we tend to find is that the fire code um, allows for many more occupants than the building than the building would likely ever have. Um, the UFT contractual maximum um, is an occupancy number that is somewhere south of the fire code and typically still more than what is in a typical building. And then there's our class size guidelines um, and the class sizes that are functioning currently, which is something less than the UFT contractual maximum and typically far less than the fire code. So in terms of how we design schools um, and our design guidelines, which are all available on our website, we have a technical standards team um, of architects, engineers, all the experts who are constantly reviewing everything from appropriate windows, appropriate insulation, appropriate facade systems to um, the size of different spaces and whether or not things need to be altered based on current equipment use and current whatever um, as DOE's needs shift and change based on how it evolves over, you know, through into the modern era. Um, so, we are constantly looking at our design standards and our design guidelines. Typically, if there are changes that need to be made to our standard program, that's something that we work out with DOE. I know that in the recent past, there were some changes made to the um, standard kitchen layout, for example, as we've electrified all of our kitchens. So that's something that we work out with, with our counterparts at DOE, especially um, they tend to be, those conversations tend to be more technical, um, but there's not like a let. There's not legislation that governs um, how okay. we design our buildings. The reason I was asking was the really the, not so much a fire code issue or how many students can fit in a room. It was more like if I had a school of 250 students, for example, maybe a music, uh, room, an art room, and a science room would make sense of those sizes. Once you get up into 700, you know, then there there becomes a question about whether the students in the school could possibly be getting the benefit of those specialized subjects with only that size room available to 700 students in a given week. And it was that sort of resource question, right? If you had the luxury of building on the whole lot and going up three stories or four stories, then there wouldn't be a music room that accommodated 30 kids. There'd be four music rooms, <laughs> you know, something like that. I just was curious where that comes from. And it sounds like it comes from DOE and a labor contract with a union. I mean, the UFT contract specifies the number of children per teacher and that's not oh. exactly what I'm talking about that's a different issue but 
um, you know, the number of music classrooms or art classrooms or science resource rooms in a building is really determined um, based on our standard programs, based on how many students we are using and based on what we think in collaboration with DOE is an appropriate amenity for the school and meets the school's needs based on the size of the building. So this is not a school that is abnormally large for us to build. This is a fairly standard program for us. Um, and in a building of this size, we wouldn't have multiple music rooms or science rooms or art rooms. We would have one music, one science, one art. Even if we had more real estate, that, that's what we would include in the building. Okay, thank you. I, it's not the way I grew up in New York City public schools. It seems very, very sad. Thanks. Uh, Rosemary. And Madam Chair, just one last question. I thank you so much for, for your patience and everybody's patience. Uh, it um, C's question um, uh, reminds me and makes me ask this question. What are um, <laughs> what are the requirements for outdoor space for students? And maybe let me just add to it. Um, uh, did you uh, uh, cut your deal with Tishman Spire to take a piece of their parking lot for outdoor recreational space because you needed it to meet the requirements? Or was this just additional, isn't this nice, there's more space for the students? Did you need that to meet the requirements on whatever laws or regulations you have to abide by. Uh, okay, that's it. That's, I, am I clear? I'm clear. Yes, yes? we have a okay. requirement under the New York City Health Code to provide outdoor play. Uh -huh. um, we did not acquire the ECC yard. Uh, for Again, I was not part of the transaction team, but we did not acquire the ECC play yard to meet some kind of legal requirement. We do typically like to locate um, little children at the lowest level possible because in the uh -huh. event of an emergency, we'd prefer not to evacuate little feet from the roof of a, of a building. So um, we negotiated the ECC play yard to be at grade for the safety of the small feet that we anticipate utilizing that yard. And again, not because you're required. So in other words, it's extra. You did Correct. this extra. It is not, so the, the play space that you have on the site and on the roof meets the requirements that you're required to do for a school of 700 students, correct? Correct. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any more hands. I think that um, uh, we want to thank uh, the School Construction Authority uh, coming and answering our questions. Um, I hope Nicole will get back to Laura and the community board on the issues that were brought up that you didn't have questions for. So we look forward to getting those answers. And um, I thank both of you for coming this evening, and um, uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go on with my um, uh, agenda. Um, I see that uh, I have li two librarians here from our local uh, libraries, um, and I want to call on them, especially uh, Martha Gonzalez, who is from the Kingsbridge Library, and they're having an event tomorrow which I'm sure they're looking forward to. And Martha, is there anything new on that? We had passed the SAPO application, so I'm, I'm curious as to how it's going. Hi, good evening, everybody. Is, am I speaking okay? I'm too loud, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm in a, a different office this evening. Uh, popped in real quick. Um, so yes, um, I'm sorry, I'm a little overwhelmed with everything that was I was hearing, so <laughs> forgive me. But um, yes, we are all ready and we are very excited. And I want to express my deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude to the, to the community board. Um, everyone on community board, NYPD, MTA, DOT, 
um, everybody um, really, really championed this um, ask and big request of us to rerouting the buses to closing the streets. We are good to go. Parking, no parking signs are up. Our flyers went up. The community is excited. They showed up today to help us, you know, pack some bags for everybody to give away tomorrow. We have activity stations. It's just going to be one big happy <laughs> kickoff to the summer and uh, end of the school year. The kids are really excited. We did some how to um, make chalk. So they're gonna come tomorrow and, you know, um, create some designs on the ground. But yeah, uh, deepest, deepest gratitude for supporting me um, with this ask. Thank you so much for um, organizing this. I'm sure it was a uh, large job and uh, you got there. It's for a while there, it looked like it's going to be too difficult to uh, produce, but um, you did it. And oh, Sylvia, Sylvia, we did it. We did it. I, 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 right. full, full credit to the community board. I couldn't do it without your help. And I'm extremely grateful. Um, I want to make a big shout out to Pablo <laughs> from community board for all, all, all my phone calls and for uh, walking me off the ledge. He, he walked me off the ledge many times um, up to the very day. Uh, with NYPD, but um, everybody showed out and showed their support and we're looking forward to it tomorrow. So if you're in the neighborhood, come on by, grab some water, grab some snacks, come and have some activities and dance. It's a big celebration. Great. Thank you so much, Martha. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, Everyone have a good night. Yeah, you too. Right. Thank you. Uh, Aga, I know that you're here. Is there anything special you want to share? Uh, Aga is from the Fight and Dival branch. Yes, thank you. Thank you, um, Sylvia. No, congratulations to Martha. And um, uh, I know it wasn't easy. And um, I think all the local branches are sending staff members to help out tomorrow in any way we can. So we're looking forward to it. And we're looking forward to all the stories because some of us, most of us will have to stay in our local branches. But uh, we're super excited about the celebration at Kingsbridge. No, I just wanted to highlight one event uh, uh, that is happening in our little branch. Uh, uh, since January, we've had a new children's librarian who came to us from a Manhattan branch. And um, we've developed such a big um, following for our story time. And as you may know, uh, Spite and Dival is a small branch. We are a small team of only five, including myself. So um, Miss Melissa, who is our new children's librarian, um, brings in about 120, 150 people bi-weekly to our story time, which she's holding if weather allows um, outside in the park. We have a permission from park, parks, city parks to, to host the story time outside, but it's a very popular um, event and so if you're ever in the neighborhood on Tuesday or Thursday at 11 o'clock you're more than welcome to join us for the story time and um, a lot of happy kids and their grown-ups so that's it from um, Spite and Dival thank you so much great thank you so much um is there anything else that um you'd like to bring up from the committee members anyone from the audience that wants to um, shout out about something. Okay, uh, then I guess that um, we will have a motion to adjourn. Second it. Second it. And um, I, I just want to say again that um, I appreciate you all showing up. Uh, I think it was a great um, success as to um, finding out what's going on at the visitation site. And um, I want to wish everybody a wonderful summer. And we'll see you in September. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your summer. Well done. Good.